is Bitcoin mining? All right, so let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin mining. You know, is it very profitable? And what should you expect if you're trying to get into this space? All right, number one. So what is Bitcoin mining? Well, I put it up here on the web page just so you guys can truly understand what is happening when you guys are running those Bitcoin mining machines. So what you're doing in essence is you're verifying a transaction and then adding it to the public ledger. So if you look here, Bitcoin mining is a process by which transactions are verified and added to the public ledger known as the blockchain. So that is the process of Bitcoin mining. Now, the number one question is, is Bitcoin mining profitable? Well, I have a lot to tell you about that. So let's go over some of the main companies when you are looking to Bitcoin mine or if you are looking to buy Bitcoin mining hardware. Okay, those three main companies are Bitmain, InnoSilicon, and the new GMO miners. Now there's also a couple other out there as far as the eBang and Canaan and a few other miners out there. But I want to talk about the most efficient miners where you guys can actually make some money. All right. So we have a little bit idea of what Bitcoin mining is. If you haven't been following my channel or you don't know who I am or what I'm doing, you can look at the past and previous videos and see that I have been mining with the ant miners from Bitmain as well as some other miners that are from InnoSilicon or the Halong, um, as well as GPU mining and some ASIC Miner Co. Um, products. So now what I've been going through or what I've been experiencing through this Bitcoin mining is a very, very hard chase on your ROI. So why is that? The reason is because you don't get the actual proper numbers. So if you're not getting proper numbers, you can't have a proper sum, right? Good. So what I'm trying to say is you don't have all the facts. You can't get to the truth. So all the facts are is that when you're Bitcoin mining, you take a look at these numbers and you pop these numbers into your um, mining calculator, you see that you're going to make $100 a month or $200 a month or $300 a month or, hey, sometimes $500 a month. But guess what? That changes very drastically and very quickly. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is changing is that the actual difficulty to mine increases. So when the difficulty to mine a coin or to mine an algorithm increases, your coin rewards decreases. So what does that mean? That means that you were supposed to make $400 the first month and you're supposed to make $400 the second month and you're supposed to make $400 the third month. I mean, that's what you at least think when you look at these calculators, right? Wrong. Okay. That means that you're going to make $400 the first, first month. And then if you have a decrease of 50%, you'll make $200 the next month. And you have another increase of 50%. You're going to make $100 that following month. So you went from making $1,200 to making $700. That's a huge difference when you're calculating your ROI. So that's something that I really want you guys to be aware of when you're thinking about heading into Bitcoin mining or cryptocurrency mining or any type of mining in the new crypto asset world. All right. You have to understand that there will be difficulty increases, um, that there will be volatility of prices that will influence how much you're making as well. So now that we've gone over this huge factor of return on investment and difficulty, um, the difficulty increasing, which you know hurts your funds. Um, let's talk a little bit about your main providers. So your main providers for these hardware, as I told you before, is going to be Bitmain, InnoSilicon, and the GMO. There are other mining companies out there, but as far as um, stability and overall good miners and having, um, let's say, experience in making the machinery. Obviously, Bitmain is going to be number one. All right. Now, you have a few miners that are coming out that are, are going to be pretty nice miners. So, for instance, let's take a look at the new Bitmain um, Ant Miner S9s. So, the Ant Miner S9s 
um, or even the S9 Hydro, these are running at your average 16 nanometer chips. Now these 16 nanometer chips, if you can take a look right here actually, you'll see it's a 16 nanometer processor, but it's only running, right? It's only running at this efficiency. So you're almost getting about one jolt per giga hash in efficiency. Now, this is where everything comes into play because your electricity cost means a lot. Again, I'm gonna say that again, your electricity cost means a lot. So that's a huge factor. So what we're looking to do is we're looking to get about a half a jolt per giga hash, right? So if we look here in the new Eno miners, we can see that the BC Turbo, BTC, sorry, T2 Turbo, all right, is driving 32 terahash at 2,200 watts. So if we were to do the calculations on that, let's do that, let's do, So if we do 2,200 watts, that's your electricity draw, divided by 32 terahash, that means you're getting about 68 jolt per giga hash. Now that's pretty good compared to about one jolt per giga hash, right? So we're thinking about 0.68 jolts per giga hash compared, right, to the one jolt per giga hash. So now this is your power draw for how much terahash or how much mining power that you have onto the system. So what your goal is as a cryptocurrency miner is to have the least amount of jolts per giga hash and to have the most amount of giga hash with using the least amount of electricity. All right, so we've looked at the Eno miners and we saw that this is the new 10 nanometer chips. So we, we said that we're using 16, 16, sorry about that, 16 nanometer chips on the Antminer S9. We're using 10 nanometer chips on the Eno T2 turbos. And on the new GOM miners, we're using the first seven nanometer chips that are gonna be available to the public. Now, yes, 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 yes. Bitmain is coming out with a seven nanometer chip, sorry, seven nanometer chip, but they have not released it to the consumer or commercial base yet. So currently, GMO is the only miner that is gonna have the seven nanometer chip. Now, if we take a little look at the specs, we can understand a little bit more about these miners and about the power consumption. Now, again, guys, you know what we're looking at. So look, 81 watts per terahash, 81 to 103 watts per terahash. So obviously the B2 miner is more efficient than the B3, but this B2 miner is definitely less, less efficient as the Eno miner, right? Because we just did at 68 watts per terahash, okay? So now, I wanna talk a little bit more about the seven nanometer chips. The seven nanometer chips have been released, have been released in a press release by Bitmain. They have not been released in a commercial base or being able to purchase these units yet. But I do wanna let you know that Bitmain is on its way with the seven nanometer chips. So now that you guys understand a little bit about the cryptocurrency mining product, so the cryptocurrency mining hardware, and you guys understand a little bit more about your return on investment and what to expect, I want to talk a little bit of, a little bit more about hardware failure, okay? And then we'll be finished up, and you guys can look at all the other videos, and hopefully you guys can come to a great conclusion yourself of what you want to do. So let's say that you spend $10,000 on hardware, and that $10,000 is supposed to bring you a return on investment in four months. So you're supposed to make back that $10,000 in three to four months and then you're gaining profit after that. Now that's all well, fine and dandy if that actually works, if the price stays the same, if not goes higher and the volatility, sorry, not the volatility, but the mining difficulty does not rise exponentially. So as long as those factors stay in place, you should be good to go. But what's something else that's a huge issue? Hardware failure. So there is a lot of hardware failure with any of these units because it is such new technology. Now guys, I want you to understand that if you are spent, sorry, if you have spent $2,000 on a 32 terahash unit and you have four of those units in there, so you have over 120 or 132 terahash, and this is what's gonna make back your ROI in those three or four months, okay, but hey, we lost a unit three months in because there was just a hardware malfunction or it was improperly built or it just went down. 
you just lost a huge chunk on your return on investment. So not only did you lose a huge chunk in your return on investment because of the time factor, because of your time crunch of mining, all right, your ROI just got pushed back tremendously. So the issue is that when you have a broken machine, you have to repack up that machine, send that machine back. The machine needs to be inspected. Once the machine is inspected, they're going to send you out a new miner or repair the miner that you sent in. So this whole process takes about a month. Now, if you are talking a month in cryptocurrency time or terms, we're talking about a year, if not more. So if you have a hardware failure and one of your machines goes down, your return on investment goes up. Now, I want you guys to know this because I don't want any tricks. I don't want you guys to have any thoughts that you're going to be a multimillionaire if you invested a couple hundred thousand dollars and that there's going to be no issues. I want you guys to have the real information because with this real information, you can make real choices heading into the future. And I want this to be profitable for you guys because if it's not profitable for you guys, it doesn't work. That's the bottom line. So we went through some of the miners. We went through some issues with mining. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you have, please hit a big like at the bottom. Also tell me what you guys think about mining heading into the future and heading into you know, the end of 2018 and upcoming 2019. I really respect you guys. I want to hear your thoughts and your opinions. So please leave it below. And as I said, if you're not subscribed, subscribe now. Give this channel a big like. And for now, until I bring you anything new, Digi out.